Hey guys, Tom here again from SynthHacker.com. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through how I created this medicine style drop sound. If you want to grab the chord MIDI to follow along with this tutorial, there's a free download link to all of my tutorial MIDI files in the description below. So this sound is made up of a melodic square wave layer and a noise layer. These have been grouped together and put through quite a bit of processing. Most of the character of this sound owes itself to the processing chain, with the serum patches themselves being super simple. For our melodic layer, we're going to use the saw round to square wavetable, with three slightly detuned voices of unison, adjusting the wavetable position to a more rounded square wave. <laughs> For a more consistent, uniform sound, we're also going to bring down the random and phase parameters to zero, so that the waveform triggers from the same point every time. So typically with these types of chord sounds, the movement is created by implementing some kind of volume automation using a plugin like LFO tool or even Serum's inbuilt LFOs. For this sound, however, I decided to try a different approach by simply giving the synth a short ramp up envelope with short decay and release. As you can see in the MIDI, instead of using sustained notes, the sequence is rhythmic, in this case utilizing Ableton's triplet grid option. To sculpt this sound further, I used a low pass 18 dB filter with no resonance, helping to create space in the frequency range for our noise layer. One trick I do like to use sometimes, however, is to slightly bring down the mix amount to add some high end air to the synth, which will be much more noticeable when we implement our processing chain later on. So moving on to the noise layer of the sound, after trying a bunch of different presets in the noise oscillator, I found that the Air Can 4 WAV sounded remarkably close to the noise in the original synth. We're going to bring the random phase parameter down to zero to again give a more consistent sound, using an identical amplitude envelope to our melodic layer, but with a slightly shorter decay. <laughs> It's also worth mentioning we're using the exact same chord MIDI to trigger this layer, with Serum set to mono to make sure we're only hearing one voice. The only processing on this noise layer is a subtle amount of RC20, mainly just to give it a slightly less harsh character. <laughs> So after grouping these two layers together in Ableton, we can start processing the sound as a whole to give it some character and help glue the layers together. The first process I used was some multiband tape saturation using Isotope's Exciter plugin. <laughs> Any saturation plugin works here, although I tried to stick to options that give you multiband control as to only saturate the mid and high frequencies. Next, I used an EQ to roll off some of the low frequency content, carving room for the 808, and also attenuate in some of the low mid muddy frequencies. <laughs> To add some lo-fi character to the sound, I again used RC20, but this time on both layers, using the follow function of the noise module to introduce some cassette noise, which dynamically reacts to the amplitude of the input signal. <laughs> Thank you. 
I also tweaked the EQ shelf at the bottom to create a brighter overall tone, as well as slightly increasing the stereo width parameter for a wider sound. <laughs> To push the stereo width even further, I also used Isotope's multiband stereo imaging plugin to really push the stereo width of the high and mid frequencies. <laughs> At this point in the sound, although I was fairly happy with the tonal character and presence, I found that it was lacking a sense of space and physicality. The issue, however, was that adding too much reverb to the sound would result in the sound feeling like it was being pushed back in the mix, which for such a core part of the track would not work that well. The solution for this was to use an audio effect rack to split the signal into two chains, the original dry signal, <laughs> and then the same sound put through a reverb at 100% wet. To avoid pushing the dry signal back in the mix, we can sidechain compress our reverb chain using the dry signal as the input. Having this split of signals is also useful for dialing in the amount of reverb we want without affecting the original sound. <laughs> Whenever layering sounds, I generally like to use Ableton's glue compressor to create a more cohesive sound. Bringing down the threshold and bringing up the makeup gain helps bring out the finer details of both layers while making the sound more uniform overall. <laughs> Finally, just to add more sense of movement and let the kick cut through the mix, I use some sidechain compression. <laughs> So when you're working on a sound like this one and you get it to a point you're happy with, often it's a good idea to bounce to audio and think about how you can make the sound more interesting over time. Working with audio opens up a world of possibilities for sound design. However, for this sound, I found that simply chopping some of the individual chord hits and reversing them really helped to add a sense of momentum to the track. <laughs> If you wanted to, you could even go a step further and bounce just the reverb chain of the sound and sequence that alongside the dry signal. A lot of the time, it's these little bits of attention to detail that can really take your sounds to the next level. So that pretty much covers everything. I hope you got something out of this video. Again, if you want to grab all of my tutorial MIDI files, including this one, check out the free download link in the description below. The presets in this video are also included with all my other tutorial presets in every pack over at synthhacker.com. It's worth mentioning I'm also currently working on a new sample pack I'm really excited to release very soon along with a bunch of tutorials to go with it so if you want to be notified when those are uploaded be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell. Thanks a lot for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.